Hey there, see if any of this feels true for you. Hey doc, you know, I feel like I just don't know my body anymore. Or doc, ever since I started to go through menopause, what used to work for my body isn't working for me any longer. Hey there, I am Dr. Topher Fox, endocrinologist in Superior, Colorado. And you know, as our bodies age, we're gonna be talking about prediabetes and menopause today. As our bodies age, you know, we, we change. We all change as we get older, obviously. But for women in particular, there's this accelerated change, big change that happens around the time of the menopause. Now, you're probably astute in saying, hey, you might be about the right age to be going through menopause, which would be true, but you are not the right gender. And that's also true. But I'll tell you that as an endocrinologist for almost two decades now in private practice, I've had the opportunity to work with, to walk alongside, to help a number of women, hundreds of women who have gone through this transition. And today I wanted to dial in on just one thing to give you some useful information that hopefully will help set you up to be able to reverse prediabetes and also help set you up for healthy aging so that you can save yourself a lot of misery down the road. And the idea is this, the idea is that as we get older, we lose muscle mass. It's an unfortunate reality in life. And for women, as they go through the menopause, we know that as estrogen levels drop, unfortunately, we see that this does two things. First, it tends to increase the, the storage of fat, and in particular, the fat tends to shift from around the hips and thighs to more around the belly or the middle, which is the unhealthy type of fat that we want to avoid when we are trying to control blood sugar, trying to reverse prediabetes. But for our discussion today, we also know that muscle mass tends to decrease as estrogen levels drop. But there are some very practical things that you can do to be able to mitigate this loss of muscle mass. And ultimately that will serve you well to be able to control your blood sugar and to be able to avoid this thing that we call fancy medical term sarcopenia or loss of muscle mass that can create frailty as we get up into our 60s, 70s and 80s. So practical advice, here we go two main things and then we'll talk about a third thing that's worthwhile to think about but two main things to be able to do two main things that will help to prevent muscle loss or maybe even help you gain muscle number one is to make sure that you are eating adequate protein and a lot of us don't eat enough protein you may have heard this before or be thinking hey doc i i know about protein i know it's important but are you getting enough so as a goal most experts recommend at least 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight, but maybe up to 1.2 might be even better. Easy way to calculate this is your weight divided by three up to your weight divided by two would be the number of grams. So if you're 150 pounds, somewhere between 50 and 75 grams of carbohydrate per day, 150 divided by three, obviously 50, 150 divided by two, 75. So 50 to 75 grams would be a, you know, a really good target. Another way to think about this is to really just focus on getting quality protein with every meal to build your meal around a quality protein, 20 to 30 grams of quality protein, whether that's coming from an animal source or a plant source or a dairy source, or potentially even you know, a protein supplement powder that you might use for things like smoothies, 20 to 30 grams per meal likely will set you up. So adequate protein, really important to maintain muscle mass. The other number two is strength training or resistance exercise. So we know that aerobic exercise, cardio exercise is great for our bodies. It's great for our heart and our lungs, and it does serve a role to help keep you alive and healthier longer. But unfortunately, it doesn't work really well to build muscle. And so while we do want cardio to be part of the overall equation, it's also great if you can have some type of strength or resistance training. And little caveat, as always, when we talk about exercise, make sure that you have the go-ahead from your healthcare team that it's safe for you to exercise. And if you're not used to or familiar with strength training, make sure you're getting guidance so that you can do it in a way that you don't get injured. But having strength training 
whether that's with body weight or resistance bands or machines or free weights, whatever it is, something that stresses your muscles in a way that helps to, uh, to increase the strength will help to uh, prevent that muscle loss that we see around the time of menopause. A uh, third thing, really easy just to throw in there, is make sure you're getting enough vitamin D. It's uh, somewhat controversial how this affects muscle, but it looks to be that getting adequate vitamin D is a simple thing that also can be done. We know that there are other things, eating good nutrition to be able to reduce inflammation in the body, maybe DHEA supplementation, but coming back to the practical points, protein, resistance training, vitamin D, make sure you're doing those three things right. And hey, before we go today, if you are a woman 50 plus who's been diagnosed with prediabetes and you like this type of training and really want to accelerate your results, get results faster and easier to be able to prevent diabetes and ideally reverse prediabetes altogether, then I encourage you to check out our program, Reversing Prediabetes, which is built just for you, just for the unique needs of women 50 plus who are dealing with prediabetes and looking to be at their best physically and mentally through proper nutrition, movement, sleep, and being able to follow through on your good intentions, having a system to help you follow through on your good intentions that does not rely on pure willpower. So let me know thoughts or comments down below. And until next time, as always, I wish you peace. Take care.